My name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. The ATI T's Study Manual. The 6th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 162. And we are on page number 94. We are dealing with the concept of units of measurements, how to go about converting metric units to English units and, uh, and vice versa. English units or sometimes they are referred to as imperial units or standard units into metric units. If you are interested in getting some more practice on this concept, you can watch the 5th edition of the T's which is from day 1 through one, 1 through 80. All the problems that appeared in the 5th edition, so you will find the solutions to all of them from day 1 through 80 and particularly the, the questions dealing with uh, the concept of units of measurements, you will find them on day number 37, 38 and 39. In addition to that, there is another resource that, uh, that is at your disposal, which is a series of basic math. On my video you will find a separate series simply labeled basic math, which goes from 1 through 100 and in that series, the last five videos, last five days, 96 through 100, we also dealt with this concept, concept of the units of measurements. Today, yesterday we talked about the fact that when we convert, when we are worried about units of measurements, there are essentially three broad categories that you have to deal with. One of them is distance. We dealt with the notion of distance yesterday. We did some problems. We did some practice problem dealing with distance. The second category is second category that you have to come, that you will come across is the weight. Well, the distance is right here from yesterday. Let's put the weights here. Again, there is not much to remember. It's very simple. There is only two things you need to remember as far as the T is, is concerned. There is only there is only little. There is only so much to expect you to know. One thing that, you, and when I say no, I mean no. You have to know this by heart. We have to know by heart that one kilo, one kilo, one kilogram is approximately 2.2 pounds. One kilogram is approximately 2.2 pounds. Other thing that we have to know by heart is that one ounce is approximately 28 grams. That's it. That's the sum total of the requirement. Let's do a problem, shall we? Let's do a problem. We are being asked to convert 6 kilogram. We are being asked to convert 6 kilogram into pounds. Six, we are being asked to find out how many pounds make up 6 kilogram. Well, let's see what we can do. Well, it's right here. We know that 1 kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. That we do know. How do we know? Because we memorized it. We committed it to our memory. We know it by heart. The problem is we are not interested in 1 kilogram. We, we are interested in 6 kilograms. Well, that's very simple. If you want 6 kilogram, not 1, convert or multiply both sides of the equation by 6 and you're done. 6 times 1 is 6. So 6 kilogram now, this should say approximately. Question might, question might say how much is it exactly, but we are doing approximation. That's it, we're done. 6 kilogram would be 6 times this quantity, 22 times 6. 22 times 6 is very simple to figure out. 2 times, there's just 12, carry 1, and 12 plus 1 is going to be 13. And then insert your decimal. Decimal was here, right here, after one place. 2.2. Right here, it was after one place. Decimal is sitting right here at the end. Move it one place and you're done. It's 13.2. The answer is 6 kilogram is approximately is approximately 13.2 pounds. Or if you like, you can say the 6 kilogram is approximately 13 pounds, which is also a perfectly valid argument. Nobody's going to uh, say that you're wrong because we're not saying that 6 kilogram is 13 pounds. We're saying 6 kilogram is approximately 13 pounds, which it is. It is approximately 13 pounds. Let's do one more, shall we? Question number two. Let's do one more. Just give me a quick break. It's hot, it's summertime. Okay, next one. It says, how many ounces make, how many ounces make 170 grams? 
170 grams make up how many ounces? Well, let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's see what we can do. Again, our starting point would be what we know. We know one ounce is 28 grams. So let's see what we can do here. But here you have to be a little bit more creative. You have to be a little bit more, a little bit more flexible, a little bit more supple in your thinking. Let's start with what we know. Let's start with what we know, which is 28 grams is one ounce. 28 grams. Let's, that's our starting point, because that's what we know. That's what we know. 28 grams is approximately one ounce. In that interest in 28 grams, we have to somehow get to 170 grams. How are we going? How are we going to make our journey? from 28 grams to 170 grams. Well, the first thing is to multiply it by 10. Multiply both sides by 10. Don't worry about it, just multiply both sides by 10 and see where it takes you. Well, where it takes us is the fact that 10 times 28, 10 times 28 is 280 grams, is approximately 10 ounces. 280 grams is too much, we only want 170. So just play with it. It's just 120, so let's take half of it. Let's take half of it. If you take half of it, half of both sides, we're going to divide 280, we're going to divide 280 by 2, we're going to divide top and bottom by 2, the bottom, bottom 2 is going to go away, and 2 has 1 2's, 4 has, 8 has 4 2's, and 0 has no 2's, so it's 140. 140 grams, approximately equal, 10 divided by 2 is 5 ounces. Are you beginning to see where we are going, where we are headed? We don't want 140 grams, we want 170 grams. We're almost done. It says 1 ounce is 28 grams, doesn't it? It says 1 ounce is 28 grams, but I assure you, nothing is going to happen to you, nobody is going to come to get you, if you end up saying that 1 ounce is approximately 30 grams. Nobody is going to do anything to you. So let's do that. Let's just, just, let's just claim that 30 grams is approximately 1 ounce. And we are done. 140 plus 30 is 170 gram is approximately 6 ounces. All done. All done. That's one way of doing it. We could have done a little bit differently, a little bit more traditional manner, in a little bit more traditional fashion. If you like, we can do it that way as well. The traditional method requires us to set it up as an equation. Let's see what we can do. Set it up. But not as an equation rather, but as a conversion factor. Let's start. We need the room, so we're going to have to arrange all of this thing. I don't want to arrange that part. It's occupying a lot of room, but I don't want to erase it. So that's it. We're done with this part. So we have we have 170 gram. We want to get rid of the gram and we want ounces. So the ounce would go on the top and the grams would go on the bottom. If the grams goes on the bottom, if we put grams on the bottom, then this gram and this gram, they're going to cancel each other out and we're going to end up with the ounce on the top. But the question is, how many grams equal one ounce? But the answer is 28 grams equal 1 ounce. There you go. In other words, we need to divide 170 by 28. We need to divide 170 by 28. Let's do it here. Which what happens? One hundred and seventy by twenty-eight. Divide top and bottom by two. How many twos does one have? How many twos does one have? One has no twos. One is too puny to have any twos. That one goes and joins the seven and becomes seventeen. Seventeen has eight twos. Eight twos are sixteen. Eight twos are sixteen. After we take away sixteen from the seventeen, we have a remainder of one. What happens to that one? That one goes and joins the zero and becomes a ten. And ten has five twos. Again, if you did not understand what we just did, here is what we did. We are dividing 170 by 2. Watch what happens. We are going to do it one more time slowly. Okay. How many 2's does 1 have? How many 2's does 1 have? 1 has no 2's. 
one is too puny to have any tools. Well, what does the one do? It goes to his next door neighbor and he joins forces with it. It becomes 17. It says, why don't you join me? I can't take on two myself. I'm too puny. Why don't we jo join together and we can, we can, take, two, uh, we can take on two right now? Uh, because otherwise I'm too, too small. I can't, I can't deal with him. So one goes and joins the seven and becomes a 17. 17 has eight twos. Eight twos are 16. Eight twos are 16. After we take away 16 from the 17, we have a remainder of one. We have a remainder of one. After we take away 16 from the 17, we have a remainder of one. What happens to that one? That one goes and joins a zero and becomes a 10. It goes and joins a zero and becomes a 10. And 10 has five twos. So it's 85. Since we divide the top by 2, we must divide the bottom by 2. 2 has 1, 2 and 8 has 4, 2. What are we going to do now? We are still stuck. What? We are almost done. We are almost done. 85 divided by 14. What we have to do now is 85 divided by 14. Well, 85 is made up of 70 and a 15. Of course, it's made up of 70 and a 15. 17 divided by 14. Do you know how many that is? 17 divided by 15, 70 divided by 14 rather, 14 times 10 is 140, 14 times 10, 14 times 10 is 140, of course we just take a zero, and therefore 14 times 5 would be half of that, which is 70. In other words, 70 is made up of 14 fives, uh, 70 is made up of 5 14s, if you divide top and bottom by 14, 14 goes away and becomes a 5. But we still have a 15 left over here, which also has to be divided by 14. It's difficult to divide 15 by 14, so let's pretend this is where the approximation comes in. We have 85, but let's pretend that this 85 is actually 84. And now this 14, 15 becomes 14, and 14 divided by 14 is 1, so we end up with 5 plus 1. 5 plus 1 is 6 ounces, which is exactly what we found which is exactly what we found earlier. Do you understand? That's all there is. There are several ways we can go about it. There are several ways we can, we could have, we, we, we can go about it. In tomorrow's video, we'll deal with the last concept which deals with the liquids. Which deals with the liquids where we talk about the volumes. So the first category of conversion factors that we, have to, that we need to worry about are the ones that deal with distance. The second category which we, we just did, which deals with weight. And finally, the volume, which we'll do in the next video. Okay? Bye now.